Today on Real Life, standing up for Down syndrome rights, how Jeremy Samick and the PA Family Council are battling to protect the unborn with disabilities. Plus, the sisters spill the beans about their husband's annoying habits. And on Real Life Coaching, who do you model yourself after? Dr. Everett Piper brings clarity to being made in the image of God. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black, with my bride of 27 years, Terry, as co-host, and our co-co-host, Pastor Yay! Amy Schaefer. Pastor in the house. We're glad you're here with us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thankful that you've joined us. God's brought you together for this program. He's arranged it on your calendar and on our calendar that we can come together. You know, ladies, that is, there's nothing in the Bible that speaks of coincidence. In right. fact, there's no word in the Hebrew language that word. has the word, that means coincidence. Hmm. Wow. Really? Right, really. The God, nothing happens by accident. By accident. Oh, Every, no. Everything is purposeful. Everything is purposeful. It's God's plan, His plan for you to watch right now. So, so, so when you realize that, let me, let me just say, say this, when you realize that, then you want to pay attention. You kind of want to engage. You don't want to just sit back on the soft chair or sofa or uh, lazy boy and just kind of zone. You want to mm -hmm. engage because you want to, you want to hear what God's got to say. That's right. That's so I, I do. I come expecting. Right. And I'm on the other side of the camera. I'm not on, the, I'm on this old hard chair, but I come expecting for God to speak to me. Mm -hmm. So expect for the Lord. He will not, I promise you this, He will not disappoint you. No. God is a fulfiller right. of our dreams, our desires. And in this program, we've got some special guests in the, in the studio. I just love to have young people in the studio. Children. Children yes. in the studio. There's nothing like the children to bring life. That's and right. We were putting Easter bunnies in the refrigerator back stairs because he was hot. So, I mean. <laughs> well, you're going to meet the, you're gonna get to meet him in just a minute, but let's talk a little bit about the woman of valor. Ladies, you guys got something going on. We sure yes. do. Who wants to go first? You go first. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I just want to tell you, every year we salute women of valor. And you might be like, what is a woman of valor? And it is just somebody in your life. It could be a neighbor, a woman, a mom, a friend, your pastor, whoever it is that has made an impact, that has been a godly example to you. Um, that, you know, we talk about Proverbs 31 a lot, that mm -hmm. woman of, and their woman of valor and all that she does. And, but you know, more than who a woman valor does, it's who she is. That's right. You know, it's, it's an example of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are having a, now it's your turn to go. We're having a woman of valor, mm -hmm. not a day, not a little moment, but a full week right. of women of valor. Right. We're celebrating strong, powerful, bold, fearless, mm -hmm. undaunted women of God, women right. with a virtue on the inside of them. Maybe you know somebody that has walked through something hard and has come through the other side and they've Absolutely. impacted your life and, and uh, hundreds of other lives. We need to know her name. That's we need right. you to send in and nominate your woman of valor. You know, the kind of woman like Esther and really? like Ruth, you know, like yes. where you go, I will go. Th mm -hmm. This this time might look hard and bad and dark, but something comes up from deep within or, or like Esther, if I perish, I perish. You know, those yes. moments that kind mm -hmm. of define a woman. We want to hear from you. That's right. Will you nominate your special woman of valor at ctvn.org backslash valor. Mm -hmm. Simple, easy, done, bam. <laughs> <laughs> And, and if you do not have a way to do it online, you can write it into us. We are taking nominations till the end of March. So we would like to get back and get it into us as soon as you can. Can we put this, our address on the screen? I, well, in case we did. We'll put the address on okay, the screen. We there you do go. That. Sure. So, that, so okay. that you can see where you'd send it in, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, ladies, I'm going to say something, too. Let me say it to you, too. Amago Day or Amago Dog? Huh? That's what I'm going to ask you. Okay. A Mago okay. Day or a Mago Dog? A Mago Day. 
no manga. I, I, I don't know why, but I, 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 don't, I don't think I wanted, right. yeah, I don't think a manga dog sounds right. Well, <laughs> if you don't know what that means, you, I want you to know what it means, but I'm not going to tell you right now. A mago day, a mago dog, that, those, that, those two little phrases mean everything about who we are and who Ooh. you see yourself and what you see yourself. Uh, our coach, Dr. Everett Piper, who is a genius, He's a what we would call a brainiac. Yes. A brainiac? Well, that's a word I use. He brainiac. makes me want to go back to school makes and my study brain better. Hurt. He's our coach, and he's going to explain a mago day or a mago dog. Terry, what's coming up next? Up next, guess what? It's sister to sister. They're going to ask and talk about how do you respond when one of your husband's little habits well, what would that annoy be? you. Let's see how the women of Sister to Sister answer this question. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Sister to Sister. We're a segment that brings you answers to the questions and problems of the world from a biblical standpoint. Well, at least our opinions and our heart on the questions. So this one's a doozy. How do you respond when one of your husband's little habits annoy you? Tell him, stop it. Okay. <laughs> and show's over. Right? <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's your answer? Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, no. and she's sticking to it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's my truth and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, no, I mean, really, bottom line is you, you have to share it with one another. You know, I think you need to be sensitive. But I think that when you don't address the small things, you have that snowball effect. That's you true. Know? Right. The other That's thing true. is, um, you know, to make sure that you tap into grace. Make sure that you tap into grace, That's right. you know, before you just go addressing and which seems like you could be nitpicking, you know, right. scripture right. talks about that, a right. nag, right. you know, a wife that's a nag, man, it's better for the man to be on a roof, you know, right. <laughs> getting beat up by the sun and all the other yeah. outside exactly. elements. Right. Right. So you don't want to mm -hmm. nag. But I think if something legitimately makes you uncomfortable, um, I think you should share it with your spouse. <laughs> okay, well, anybody? I, I'm gonna sing a little Kenny Rogers song. I hope it's okay on the show. Uh, <laughs> no when to hold them. No when to fold them. No when to walk away. No when to run. You got to count like a rat. your, your blessings. blessings. <laughs> While sitting at the, at the table, <laughs> there'll be time enough to walk away when, when the, the day, day is done. done. <laughs> okay, All right, we are I, say, <laughs> I say this because of, as one who has, has said too much too often, mm -hmm. you know, the to little habits, the toothpaste thing, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. socks on the floor. Oh, you know what, ladies, get a life. Really? Right. Don't worry <laughs> about those it. things. Right. I have found sometimes when I, you know, what's the word prudence? We don't use that word enough. Yes, yes, when to yes, say, yes, how to say it. Thing. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. They know what's annoying you. Mm -hmm. I recall one time when somebody said, all right, we're talking in a group, a marriage group, and they're mm -hmm. saying, okay, what annoys you, what doesn't? And Alan like spoke up, I know that I'm slop. I said, I would have never said that about you in public. Right. Mm -hmm. He already knew. I'm like, That's wow, right. he already knew. God, sometimes you have to let the Lord and take it to the Lord and pray about it, you know, and, and have a gentleness about your demeanor because I didn't realize God was already working on the issue I was peeved about. That's good. So, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. Hey, it's not a big deal. Right. Let it That's go good. off That's of you good. some of those little habits because you love that guy no matter what. Amen. So. Right, right. Amen. And honestly, so well I don't said. want to hear about my annoying habits either. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? I was going to say, you better be prepared. If you're going to be bringing up their little habits, you better be prepared to get it right back because I know I have some annoying habits. I just think no. it's funny. I think it's funny how there were things like when we were dating and we were first married and I was just like, oh, it's so cute. Yeah, and oh my gosh, Timmy's so cute. He does this cute little thing. And 
now I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so annoying. Yes, yes. It's just funny how that transition oh, happens. Right. I just, right. I mean, honestly, what mm -hmm. popped into my head was the golden rule. It's like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do I want him nitpicking every little thing that I do? Because I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. And so I don't want to be that nitpicky wife. That mm -hmm. verse, man, that is like, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't be that right. dripping water. Amanda, are you going to yeah. tell Gary that he does things that annoy you? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, In the you're beginning. You're surprising me because you're so gentle of spirit. Right. And yet your answers are so truthful and so real. And we <laughs> resonate with our people. All our right. Go. Well, good. I hope so. Well, in the beginning, I think it comes with maturity, too. In yes, the beginning, yes. I'm very, I don't know if I can say this, but like anal, like about everything having a place. And yeah. I had to get over it, especially when the children were added to the mix, because literally mm -hmm. I was like following them around, like picking everything. And I'm like, I'm driving myself insane to the point where my head is hurting and I am very un pretty to come home to. <laughs> He's just like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? But he has said to me, you know, here we are, we'll be married like 20 some years. We got married in 95, but anyhow, I'm not gonna do the math. I can't think right okay. now. Okay. So I've come a long way and he's almost like, I wish you'd go a little bit back. To <laughs> because I was like, okay, if y'all want the house to be like this, that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. I've gotten right. over a right. lot. So right. I think that it came with the experiences and the right. maturity. And when you have big things on the table, like right. you realize yeah. who cares about the toothpaste? Yeah. Like yeah. it just yeah. doesn't matter anymore. How many years married? She didn't want to do that. Oh, okay, okay, 24 this year. How many year. years married? Uh, 35, 36. How, how many years married? We're gonna have our 20th this year. Woo. How many years married? 30 something. 44 <laughs> years. Thanks, for this cheerleader who married the bad boy with the black leather jacket. Uh -oh. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>'t imagine I, I, I want to defer Inquiring to minds that, that you, know. you know as time and as matured there's some things I just got over really? but I am sure that there <laughs> are and then I agree with Roxanne that you got to pray about it and I always say you just got to pick your battles but I right. like the Kenny Rogers song so much better you got to know mm -hmm. when it's so true you got to know like mm -hmm. when is it worth going to battle over That's right. you know mm -hmm. when what is the spoil going to be what is the outcome going to be you know the little things like hey Amy where's the ketchup um in the refrigerator you know you can run multi corporations and you can't find the ketchup in the refrigerator <laughs> and then I just come in I'm like oh it's right there how yeah, interesting right. you know just little things but there's so much more good that's right. Then there is annoying and I think once we we get into error is when we're focusing on the annoying Absolutely. Because then the annoying, it's like a baby shark. And then another thing's annoying. And then it gets mm -hmm. bigger and it's like, na nah, nah, nah. And then all of a sudden it's like, right. I don't even like you. I can't even stand you. Why mm -hmm. do you look at me like that? Oh I want to walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, I've asked you to do this and you're not doing it. And, like, and it can turn into a big shark. And it's, it's like becomes yeah. a wedge. It becomes yeah. a major wall in and your divorce. relationship. Yeah, it could it, be. Yeah. It really does. It's just, it's a subtle thing. It yep. starts with little things in life and it gets, it's sort of what, like a spindle. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you keep wrapping around and wrapping around and then it becomes this huge, right. huge, big, big wall. 27 years, 22 yeah. years, going mm -hmm. on 23. Forgive. Right. Let it go. And I've been Think about all the I've good. been married 15 years and I can tell you, <laughs> 20, 27, 27 years. Well, my, my only advice, I, I love to watch you guys do that because my only advice to anybody that's married is don't go to bed mad. That's my only advice. Right. Mm -hmm. Try to go to bed happy mm -hmm. as best you can. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes you just got to go to bed, but, but try not to go to bed mad. Mm -hmm. right. you know, try to work right. it out, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, it, if you're aggravated, then bring it out. If you're not, then don't. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the sisters did a good job with that question. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about something very much shifting gears, something very, very uh, alarming and startling in our area about life. 
So you don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Plus our brand new Christian Patriot Briefing. It's filled with ways that we can pray for our nation and take action. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Friend, daughter, sister, mother, wife. Here at Cornerstone, we want to honor the woman of valor in your life. Go to ctvn.org slash valor to nominate your special Proverbs 31 woman. Tell us her story, and she may be chosen to be our 2018 recipient. Honor the special lady in your life. Nominate her today. You know, Terry, there's, we're just talking about uh, conflicts in marriages and right. relationships, mm -hmm. and sometimes families, couples fight. Yes. You know, and sometimes I, they're like silly. I like to call it argue. Okay, sometimes they argue. We can't, <laughs> I don't want to fight about that. <laughs> but, but some things are worth fighting about. You know, there are, is a time when you have to just get ready for the fight. Jeremy, uh, uh, oh, Sam, 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 I can't say your name, Jeremy. <laughs> Sammy, my mind doesn't connect, brother, forget that. Uh, and his wife, I can say Sarah, adopted a very special blessing into their lives. And today, in the courts, they continue to stand for the lives of children with special needs. Jeremy, Sarah, welcome with your little one Yay. back to real life. I'm sorry about your name, man. That's okay. That's you ever okay. had that experience when you can't? Maybe it's just me. <laughs> no, never, never, no. I've never experienced stuff they, like that. <laughs> they don't mix, but we're so glad you're here. We're here yeah. for a serious conversation, yes. even though you brought a beautiful, well, you brought two beautiful ladies with mm -hmm. you. I did. Beautiful I young lady <laughs> here with us. Let's let's Yay. talk about this, brother. You you guys brought into your family a, a special gift, a special present from God. Tell, how, how, how did that start? How did this happen with her? How did you bring her into your family? Um, well, Jeremy and I um, had always talked about adopting before we were married even. That was part of our plan that we hoped God would let us adopt someday. Then um, we had four boys and it just um, opened up in November 2015. God told us to pray and we felt like he was calling us to do foster care or adopt mm -hmm. at that time. And it was um, during that process, my friend sent us a website where we saw Maria's picture and um, God said, that's your daughter, go get her. And, and we, he opened up the doors for that to happen. And you have four sons. Yes. Wow. Wow. How oh, long have you, how long has she been in your family? Uh, she's been home just over a year. Oh, really? A year? Yes, yes. Oh, come on over here. So how Sit old with is me. she? This is, how old uh, is she's going to be three at the end of the month. Oh, really? Yeah. Three years old. Three. three years old. Now, Jeremy, in your, yeah. uh, as a livelihood, mm -hmm. can you just share with everybody what you do and why all of, why we're here today to talk about this important lesson. Sure, uh, I work with the Pennsylvania Family Institute. I'm one of the, the uh, attorneys on staff and we uh, work to protect life at all stages, mm -hmm. uh, promote marriage in the family and preserve religious liberty. And just two days ago, we were in the state capitol with Maria um, with a very important topic. Uh, we were advocating for a bill that's called House Bill uh, 2050 and Senate Bill 1050, okay. which would make it illegal to have an abortion on the basis of a diagnosis of Down syndrome. Okay, it would make it illegal to have an abortion. So we're saying that right now in the state of Pennsylvania that it is legal to have an abortion based on whether or not they have, when they have diagnosed with Down syndrome and also gender, is that correct, or, or Down yeah, syndrome? It, currently uh, in Pennsylvania, it's illegal to have a, a, an abortion on the basis of sex. Okay. But it's legal to have an abortion on the basis of whether somebody's diagnosed with Down syndrome. Is that right? That's right. And 69 to 90% of the children in the United States that are given a prenatal test and, and uh, comes back with a positive indication for Down syndrome. How many, what percentage? 69 to 90% in the United States. Really? Uh, abort their children um, simply because they may have Down syndrome. Some of the times these tests are inaccurate. We have tons of friends who they themselves uh, their parents were told that they were going to have a Down syndrome and they ended up not having it. Oh my goodness. So I want to do a broader 
paint stroke here that in Pennsylvania, um, we are one of the few states that still allow late-term abortions. Isn't mm -hmm. that correct? Yes, yes. And so, I mean, that is appalling to me, you know, to have our governor oppose that. And then to also know that it's legal that we can abort Down syndrome children. Right. You know, I, um, what can we do? I mean, what would, let's, let's, um, have the battle cry here. Right. What is something that we can do into our family of viewers? What can we do? I think the first thing we do is we need to experience, we need to get to know people that have uh, Down syndrome. In France, there was an organization that wanted to put a commercial on the airwaves that would show uh, people with Down syndrome that would talk about their lives and how, sure, how sure. wonderful their lives are, how, how happy they are. And the, uh, the state council in France told them that they cannot have a commercial like that on the air, and they really? prohibited it from being on the air. And the reason was because they didn't want to make anybody feel bad if they chose to because abort they, a child had that, that had Down syndrome. And well, so telling the story, I think, and that's, that goes for lots of different issues, telling people stories makes a, a big impact. Well, see in so, life, see right. her. What a the, the beautiful young lady France she is. France wouldn't want her to be on this oh, TV that's show right that's now. That's crazy. Oh, 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 oh. She's leaving yeah, the TV she show actually right now. <laughs> I'll go grab her. She's going off <laughs> and do her own television uh, show. Yes. But, but we, have to, we have to respect life and we have to protect life. Now that means at all stages of life. That's right. All stages of life, whether it's before birth or even all the way to natural death, when we are graduated to go to heaven, when we're life is when we've ended our life right, to age. Absolutely. The, there's the progressive mindset says these 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 different bookends are not protected. Mm -hmm. yes. You only are valuable when you're able to be productive, and only productive when you meet up to the measurement, Jeremy, of what somebody else says is right or good or valuable, right. and that's not God's way. Right. And, I, and let me tell you a story. Uh, a good friend of mine that lives here in Pittsburgh, uh, Kurt Condrick, he used to be a Pittsburgh police officer. Um, him and his wife uh, had, a, had a son, and they were pregnant with their next child. They went in, they had some tests done, and the doctors told them, it looks like uh, your child tests positive for Down syndrome. Uh, and they started pressuring them into having an abortion because of Down syndrome. And this is something that happens every day in this nation. It's something that happens every day in other nations. In, in Iceland, 99% of children with Down syndrome are aborted. Wow. CBS did an article back in 2017 where they said, uh, Down syndrome births almost eradicated in Iceland. Now, if you look at that headline, you'd think they've come up with some sort of, uh, some, some sort of a surgery or, or, or something that could uh, work with the chromosomes and help. The, but really what they were talking about is exterminating people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't say we're solving the problem with homelessness by eliminating the homeless, yeah, right? No, no, but that's no. what they talk, that's the way that they talk about this issue. So these doctors are pressuring people into having abortions. The little girl was ultimately born. Uh, her name is Chloe. 2014, a law was passed based on, it's called Chloe's Law, mm -hmm. named after this little girl mm -hmm. that would provide parents with education about um, the, the things that are available to children with Down syndrome and, and the high quality of life that they have. But press, parents are still being pressured to have an abortion. This man was working to protect citizens in his That's job right. as a police and he was told, wow. why don't you just take care take, of this person right. by eliminating the life That's of this right. person. So um, they were there with us two days ago fighting for this. We had another wonderful speaker. She's a woman who has swam across Lake Tahoe she has an honorary doctorate degree. She's swam on a relay team across the English Channel, and she has Down syndrome. Really? Well, I was just going to say, I just watched the Olympics, and then I watched parts of the Special Olympics, and some of the happiest people, and in my, in my own life, the experiences I've had with people that have special needs, some of the happiest, sweetest, kindest, love Jesus the most people are people with special yeah. needs. Yeah, they have just such pure hearts and they have a lot of empathy so for people. Uh, they're kind and friendly, even when people aren't kind and friendly to them. They are very forgiving and empathetic. And um, our boys just have had a, it's a blessing to have in our family just for them alone to come alongside and see um, dignity in all life and to come alongside of her and help her and so, cheer her on. Well, you, absolutely. Oh, oh, so what do we do? Mm -hmm. What do we do as, as Christians? Mm -hmm. What can we do to resist and uh, stand up and let our voices be heard? Jeremy, what, what do you say? Well, there are people like Chloe. Chloe was down at the March for Life this year. She got to stand in the Rose Garden when President Trump uh, addressed the, the, mar well, the there marchers. There she is. There's Look some pictures. That. That's oh, right. Well, there's there's, there's uh, Chloe Convert uh, standing beside President Trump. 
Um, and she also went to the United Nations last year. And I think I think we have a picture of her yeah, that. standing. Is there another picture? That's uh, her giving a peace sign between the delegate <laughs> from Saudi that. Arabia and the Russian oh, Federation. <laughs> and she's going to be there again at the yeah. end of this month. So, oh, awesome. so supporting people like her um, that are doing that important work. Um, again, telling the stories. And the other thing we can do is uh, we can go to www.pafamily.org okay. yeah. and go to the Citizen Action Center. And you can easily write your state senator and state representative and tell them to sign on to this important bill. Are we close, are we close to, where, where are we in the process? Are we, are we close to it or? It, it hasn't gone through committee yet. Yeah. So it's really important. Right now, uh, state senators and representatives can still get their name on to the sponsorship memo. Um, but they need to continually hear our voices. And there's a number of Democrats in Western Pennsylvania that are even on this bill because they understand the importance of, of this. It's just the heart of God. We're made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and who are we to tell God what that mm -hmm. looks like? And you know? the church needs to speak out when we see people ascribing like who has the best quality of life and who doesn't and how to avoid oh, that. Absolutely. All life is worthy of protection. And then also we need to encourage anybody that wants to pursue adoption, yes. that special need adoptions, they are, they are readily throughout the world, correct? Yes, you yes. know, and to pursue that, if yes. you, if God has put that in your heart. That's right. Well, let's go to the website. Come to, mm -hmm. come to ours, ctvn.org. We'll give you a link over to theirs, and then follow the link and go and tell your congressman or your senator or your state senator, state congress, what you think and how you want them. And you know, if you don't let your voice be heard. Somebody else's voice is going to get heard, and the voice that gets heard is going to be the ones who make the rules. And if we don't make the right rules, if we make stupid rules based upon lies, then we're going to face those decisions. So we got to stand on the truth. Thank you, guys, for coming. I know. Thank you. So Thank you for bringing your baby. What, what did you? We get to see Jack. Maybe some other time we'll bring Jack back and bring all those boys back. We're so glad you're here. Let's go see what Sydney's found in the news. of the EPA says harvesting natural resources is in the Bible. Scott Pruitt told CBN his Christian views helps him make decisions on environmental policy. He said it's important to cultivate natural resources in a way that blesses humanity. During the interview, Pruitt shared he got involved in politics after he read Isaiah 1, which says, I'll restore your leaders in the day of old, your judges, as a beginning. And speaking of the book of Isaiah, a 2,700-year-old clay seal may include the signature of the prophet who wrote the book. An archaeologist believes the artifact once said belonging to the prophet Isaiah. If the interpretation is right, it would be the first reference to Isaiah outside of the Bible. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Imagine that to actually see the signature of Isaiah. That is awesome. I, I, it, I, you know, when I saw that, I was like, oh, wait, where is the curse of signature? <laughs> how would they know it's Isaiah's? I'd love to know how they're deciphering yeah. that and studying yeah. that out, you mm -hmm. know? Mine's <laughs> brighter than mine, cool. can tell you that. Right. <laughs> but, but it's an amazing thing. Archit we talk about science. Yeah. Sometimes science positions itself anti-God and mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, people put science in place of God and they said we can trust science but science is really dictated by God. Mm -hmm. I love our program Origins by the way. That's right. If you've never watched Origins you got to watch it because we come right at the truth through God's Word and then we share with you how science That's is right. catching up to God's Word. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to do it Amy but they have a way of, 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 of getting a prototype on it and mm -hmm. just to see that architecture mm -hmm. that so has cool. been so, not architecture, arch, uh, all, arch, uh, archaeology. archaeology, how it goes way back to these, mm -hmm. these dates and the more we know about the truth, the more we understand how true it is. Right. Well, you know, we also are having a special called Why Build the Ark. And yeah, we're, we're You know, out. that Ooh. Origins is doing. So you need to stay tuned and, and look, watch that because that's very fascinating. Science just confirms yeah. the word. Absolutely. Creation. Yeah. God. Yeah. I know. It, it sure doesn't, does. It doesn't disqualify God. That's an Imago day. A Mago dog. dog. Hmm. Day. What do you say? I'm with Amy. Day, Day dog. That's right. Day sounds what, We're going to find yeah. out when we come back for a coach. You don't <laughs> want to miss it because that answer changes how you think and what your life's like. I grew up in a Christian home, but it was at a certain point I really made a decision when I was 14 that I was going to serve the Lord. 
You know, I didn't know how that was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to be a missionary. I didn't know if I was going to go to college to be a, a pastor. I had no clue. Um, but I knew I thought God had a call in my life. I went to college, graduated from Penn State, worked for a while, wasn't my deal. Then I went back to graduate school. And in that graduate school experience, I really felt that God was calling me into the ministry in some capacity. And so because of that, I um, kept going forward. God opened doors and I would go through that. I never had a ta-da moment, but I knew that there was a journey. And so I wanted to follow my journey that God had given me. At Real Life Coaching, our goal is to help you become the best you. And that's the you that God has designed and created. And when you are that person walking in that way, step by step, day by day, it doesn't happen like that. It's a process. Then you can fulfill the purposes that God has for your life. And only then can you fulfill those purposes. Our coach in this, in this session is Dr. Everett Piper, who authored Not a Daycare. He breaks down why our identity must be rooted in God. Let's get started with coaching. Dr. Barber, I've enjoyed our coaching sessions. I got to tell you, frankly, I got to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know our, 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 our students at home are going, man, he is just putting the information out. And I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that because you, there's, no, there's no shortness of depth and truth. And thank you for preparing and being willing to come and do that. That's so important. You know, and, and in light of who we are, who are we and how are we created? Uh, there's confusion about the, who we're made in. You know, the Bible says we're made in the image of God. How do you, what's that mean to you? Well, it's interesting. Um, I know you're being gracious in promoting my book, Not a Daycare, as we go through these coaching sessions. I have another book that will be produced by Regner and it's going to be titled Identity, Imago Dei or Imago Dog. Identity. Imago Dei or Imago Dog. We are told that we are made in the image of God, the Imago Dei, the image of God. And nothing else in creation bears that label. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately today in our postmodern culture, because we've reversed definitions and we want to claim authority and diminish God to you know, the back seat in the, in the church or just claim he doesn't exist at all, uh, we have dumbed down the definition of the human being. We think we're elevating ourselves by claiming to be as God, when really we dumb down the definition of who we are. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll give you an example. Um, the LGBTQ argument, the gay, lesbian, transgender argument, essentially says this. The human being is nothing but the sum total of his inclinations. Your identity is nothing more than what you're inclined to do. So if you're inclined to do something, sexually or otherwise, that inclination toward that given behavior, that given act, is your identity. And thus, people claim that they're transgender. Thus, people claim that they identify, does this language sound familiar? Sure. They identify as being female, even though they're a biological male. Mm -hmm. They identify as gay or homosexual. Now, what are they doing? They're saying that their de desires, their desires define them. That's right. That's an insult to the human being. The Imago Dei, made in the image of God, is an individual that has the personal responsibility, personal culpability, and the understanding of his personal morality to choose not to do certain things. I've got news for you. There are lots of things I'd like to do that I choose not to do sure. because sure. I have free will and I'm supposed to choose not to. I'm supposed to choose not to steal. I'm supposed to choose not to lie. Am I inclined to lie? Am I inclined to be a thief? Sure I am. Who isn't? But I, 
I don't have to be defined by those desires. I refuse to dumb down my identity to nothing but the sum total of what I'm inclined to do. Now, if we do that when it comes to lying and stealing and cheating and violence and anger and other sins that get expressed inappropriately in culture, and even the secular world expects us to control those things, they don't define us by those things, why do we buy this lie and drink this Kool-Aid that we're defined by our sexual desires? Mm -hmm. We are the Imago Dei, we're not the Imago Dog. We are defined as being made in the image of God, not in the image of an animal. I don't have to follow my every appetite and instinct. My belly, my libido, my hunger, my appetite does not define me. Mm, man, that's so true. Because in the, in the flesh, Paul, Paul, Paul defined it as the uh, battle for the flesh or the spirit. You know, and so the, in the flesh, it's just carnal. It's just natural. And people write that off and say, well, I'm just a person. I'm just a human being. And they allow whatever behaviors to flow out of that excuse that I'm just a human being. And I, I've never thought about it in regards to the sexual identity. Because when you do that, you have disengaged with your identity as a spirit person. Where well, everybody's a spirit person. Essentially, we disengage from the spiritual and the actual. We disengage from our spiritual gift being made in the image of God. We also disengage from reality because we'll start denying biology. I've got news for you, at Oklahoma Wesleyan University, we still teach biology, we teach physiology. We believe in genetics and we believe that women are real. They're not a fantasy or a fabrication of a dysphoric male who raises his hand on any given day and says, I'm a woman. What's more insulting to a woman than to suggest that she's not real? I'll say that again, what is more insulting to a female than to suggest that she's not a biological fact, that she's a fantasy and fabrication, she's a leprechaun, she's a unicorn. Just make believe and a person can be a woman. There's nothing that's a greater insult than to any human being than to suggest that they don't exist. Mm -hmm. But today, we take women, we say, you're not real, you don't exist, and any male that wants to take your shower, take your bathroom, take your dignity, and take your identity. That's right. That makes them a woman. And what's, what is the result? When the male libido is released like this, unrestrained, women and children always suffer first and most. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who suffer. They lose their shower, they lose their restrooms, they lose their privacy, they lose their dignity, they lose their sport. Mm -hmm. In the Olympics right now, it is now, the International Olympic Committee has now made it official policy that biological males can box against biological females. Why is this, how is this possibly right? Because of identif uh, uh, identification. Yes, if a guy says I identify mm -hmm. as a woman, he can now participate in a woman's sport. Well, that makes women's sports irrelevant. They're not even, that it, it, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So identity, I would argue, is the seminal question of our time. Mm -hmm. In fact, Chuck Colson, I had the privilege of studying under Chuck before he died. He said that there are four components to any worldview. And they are the definition of man, the nature of man, the responsibility of man, and the redemption of man. I'll repeat that. The origin of man, the nature of man, the responsibility of man, and the redemption of man. So origins, where do we come from? Primordial ooze, or are we created by God? Nature, are we good in and of ourselves, or are we broken and sinful and need redemption? That leads to the third question. How are you redeemed? How do you solve the problem? And then at the end of the day, what is our responsibility? Mm -hmm. Every worldview, whether it's Islam, or whether it's Buddhism, or whether it's Christianity, answers those questions. And Christianity is the only one that answers it correctly and says, you're the Imago Dei, you're not the Imago Dog, your identity is in Christ Jesus. You're born again, you're born again, you're redeemed. You're the Imago Dei. Mm -hmm. Now by God's grace, act like it. Mm -hmm. And by the power of His Holy Spirit, live in victory. Exactly. And not under the burden of the law or mm -hmm. the burden of sin. Where, where are our leaders in, I'm going to broaden past the academic road, line, just across our world. Where, where's, the, where's the leadership that can think logically or with perspective like this? Oh, unfortunately, it's very lacking today. Very lacking. For example, every college and university in the nation Every college and university in the nation received a letter a few years ago from the Department of Education and the Office of Civil Rights mm. demanding that we all start providing transgender accommodations on our campuses, okay? My response was relatively rare. 
In fact, I'm not aware of anybody that did this. My response was to craft a letter and send back to the DOE, and it essentially said this, no. <laughs> and I elaborated a bit and essentially went on and said, at Oklahoma Wesleyan University, we believe that women are real, and therefore, we are going to provide them with their own bathrooms, their own showers, their own scholarships, their own sports, and their own dignity, and we're gonna honor their objective identity and not dumb it down to a fantasy or a fabrication. And by the way, Mr. DOE, you're telling me under the auspices of Title IX, which is a 1972 law mm -hmm. that requires us to give women equal access to the athletic field and to give women equal access to scholarships and sports. You're telling me under the auspices of Title IX that I now have to deny the biological fact of a female. How can I give a woman equal access to anything if I tell her she doesn't exist? You know well, what the response was? I was, was? going to say, what, what was their response? They said, okay, you've got an exemption. <laughs> But here's the point. We need to get a spine and That's get right. some courage and get some confidence and run into the storm rather than away from the storm. We need to have confidence that if we wave the banner of the truth of Christ and the truth of Scripture, and if we win waving that banner, great, that's God's grace. But if we lose waving that banner, who cares? It's the right banner to wave. That's Be right. willing to go down fighting. Go down fighting. Boy, that's, that's, a, that's a visual that we don't really, as a church, want to, want to say, we want everybody to be happy. We want, we, we want to live peacefully. We want to have a, a nice warm experience with the world, not be uh, salt and light to the world. And, and we need to change our mentality, I think, brother. I, it's time to raise up the truth of the gospel and, and let, it, let it stand on its own. God doesn't need our defense. He just needs our participation. And I would argue he also doesn't necessarily elevate safety above goodness. And what do I mean by that? C.S. Lewis tells us in the Chronicles of Narnia that the great lion Aslan, mm -hmm. the great lion Aslan is not safe, but he's good. Mm -hmm. Again, the great lion Aslan, Jesus Christ is not safe, but he's good. And what did he mean by that? Safety is not the first thing. Mm -hmm. Goodness is the first thing. You need to put first things first because when we do, we are blessed with our faithfulness to the first, the alpha and the omega. Mm -hmm. But when we put second things first and elevate our safety above goodness, we often get neither, yeah, safety right. or goodness. No, we, we live in a compromised reality mm -hmm. that really is, is, a, is just a fog. It's a fog. Where does that courage come from? Where, where, does it, where does it sponsor from? And what do you have to have to be prepared to go into that kind of a conflict, that kind of a, a, a I don't want to use the word battle, but that, that type of uh, defense. What do you have to have? Confidence in the Word. Be well grounded in the Word. Realize that the Word is enduring, that it is immutable, that it's inerrant, and that it is true. And realize that that measuring rod gives you the confidence to engage in the game. Back to the analogy of sports. You can't play basketball or football or soccer unless there are boundaries. That's the Word. You can't play any sport unless there's a re referee to blow the whistle on the game. Because if there is no referee and there are no rules and there are no boundaries, it's chaos. You can't play anything. It's anarchy. And it's true in music too. If you don't understand the rhyme, the rhythm, the cadence, the rules of music, you cannot play an instrument. Mm. It's chaos, not a concerto. Mm. So we have to recognize the measuring rod outside of those things being measured and that is the Word of God, the Bible, mm. as our anchor point that it gives us the courage and the confidence because we're standing on rock, not the shifting sands of a postmodern culture that just wants to change the definitions at a whim. How do you, how, as, a, as a brother in the Lord, how do you get that knowledge? What's the first step on the process of getting that firm understanding of the Word? Well, I'd recommend a couple places where people should study. If you've got kids, send them to Worldview Academy. It's a great one-week boot camp for teenagers mm -hmm. to teach them for a week mm -hmm. how to defend their faith. If they're 17, 18, older teenagers, send them to Summit Ministries. They have a great two-week boot camp. For adults, Ravi Zacharias Ministries has an Oxford Center for Christian Apologetics, for example. Mm -hmm. I actually studied there. Chuck Colson's center has a one-year program called its Fellows Program and a Centurion's Program. These are ministries, these are educational organizations that specialize in teaching us how to defend the faith that lies within. Because it, it, that, that really is it. That really is it. Because inside of us is God's Holy Spirit. He has trusted us and he's placed his Holy Spirit in us when we were born again. So that's that prompting of his spirit 
And as you're watching this program and you're listening to the teaching and you're saying, boy, that's right, that's right, that's right. I wish I could have thought that. I wish I'd have said that. Or I wish I, I could get this prepared. You're feeling it first in your spirit because the spirit leads us into all truth. And then as he leads us, then it's up to us to take it from there and to take that next step and to take that next step because we build on our lives layer on layer. Now, it's not like that. You've got to build it. Repetition, repetition, repetition. The secret to success is repetition, repetition, repetition. Say it once, say it twice, say it three times. Chuck Colson told me, you never learn it until you teach it. And that was his way of saying, now you can sit here and read this stuff and listen to a lecture till the cows come home. You'll never be able to defend it until you practice it. Practice, practice, practice. Thank you. Thank you for being a teacher to us. And I, I want to encourage you. The book's called Not a Daycare. It's a call to action. It's like a, it's like a manifesto to come to alive, you know, to bring the truth alive inside of your heart and inside of your head so your words can get right. If you can get the word right, then it's going to flow right. So I want you to have this book. We'll give, give it to you as our gift, along with this DVD, which is, is uh, the same content on a, in a video DVD perspective, as you place your best gift into the ministry at Cornerstone. We need your help. We really do. We, we need you to help us take the gospel out as, as to as many people as we can. So I want you to grow. I want you to be able to defend your faith. I want you to be able to stand up against any spiritual or social bully that comes at you and tries to intimidate you, whether it's in social media or whether it's face to face, and you'll be able to stand and give a defense. Say, no, that's not the truth. Here's the truth. And you learn it step by step, principle by principle. The Bible says precept on precept. So call the number on the screen or go to the website and plant this into your life. Don't get it and not read it. Don't put it in your library and go, gee, someday I'll get to it. No, 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 no. Get it and put it to play right away. Do it right away. Because we're in the engaged right now in this, in this struggle. And the consequences have eternal ramifications. And I want us to count for eternity. Let's count for eternity. You know, that's the story of the supernatural is eternity. And when the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit flows in us and around us, you can sense him. You know when it's the truth. You feel his presence. You hear his voice. You feel his, your conscience moving you in the right direction. Then things happen that are not explainable. We call them miracles. Here's a story of a miracle. The ability to forgive. This is such an important notion for we as Christians to live by. Sadly though, I once let bitterness and animosity consume my heart. I was hurt very badly by someone very close to me. My anger and rage toward that person grew stronger with each passing day. Not only that, but physically, my body started to grow more and more sickly. I somehow needed to rid myself from this darkness. I called Cornerstone, and as I prayed with a prayer partner, I felt the Holy Spirit take hold of me and give me the power to forgive. As soon as I forgave that person who hurt me, my sickness went away. It was truly miraculous. I now choose to never hold on to my hurts, but to give them to God and to live by His grace. When I watch uh, Dr. Piper and I listen to what he said, and I was sitting beside him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I watch it again just now, I'm still amazed at the flow of the truth that he, right. that he presents. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, for people that are watching, he talked about how women are sort of being fabricated and, and like, what did he say about that they're not being real? What is he meaning? Like, what's going on? Some people watching may not realize that about what's happening with women today. I think it has to do with the identity, the Imago Dei and the Imago Dog, where he's talking about our identity comes from Christ mm -hmm. and what God says about us and who he created us to be, male and female, God created he them. And then what happens with, um, you know, certain communities, they say, well, my identity is in my sexual desires okay. or sexual inclinations, I right. believe is exactly what he said. Right. So then 
it sort of takes the value to me it it devalues right. womanhood mm -hmm. it's like i'm not i'm not just a sexual being i'm actually a daughter of the most high god mm -hmm. i'm actually more alive spiritually than i am physically mm -hmm. so do you know what I, it, it's like it's a different uh view so it kind of devalues you to just sort of how are you sexually inclined rather than right. the way you are designed biologically by God created he in, in his image we were created. I'm, I'm not going to debate like he just debated. I no. don't know why I'm talking about it, but, but you know, no, that's I, the, I do. I think that's important for everyone that's watching because it's a little confusing <clears throat> mm -hmm. that really the bottom line is what's going on in the gender, transgender mm -hmm. and all that is that everyone is defining themselves by their sexual desires mm -hmm. or how they feel they are leaning towards mm -hmm. and not the bigger picture of who God has created them spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Right. Well, that, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a biological fact. Right. I think mm -hmm. Dr. Piper, if he was here, he'd say, it's a biological fact. You are a man or you are a woman. In right. very, very, very rare cases, there's anything else. That's it. We got two choices and you can go to the DNA level and find out what that is. You don't have to look at your body to determine whether you're a man or a woman. On a DNA level, it tells you whether you're a man or a woman. And so what he says, and what the truth is in our postmodern age, and in this world of, uh, of um, what's the self-identification, mm -hmm. you know, I identify the way I feel makes it real for me. I don't right. feel like a man or I don't feel like a woman. I'm a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa. That's ignoring all science and all the laws of the universe. It's ignoring your own DNA. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're just taking, and when we as a culture accepts that, here's the, here's the bottom line, when we as a culture accepts that ability to identify ourselves as what we're not, and if we do it in gender, women have now been uh, put in a place that you've been totally disrespected because you don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. I can just become a woman. If I just say I'm a woman, I feel like a woman. Mm -hmm. Now I can come into your restrooms. Now, now I can, now I can be, uh, play on the Olympics team as a man, but right. I'm really, I'm identifying myself as a woman. It can go both ways, though, It too. can go both right. ways. You know? it, it, mm -hmm. can, it can go, but it's been predominantly going mm -hmm. man identifying as a woman. Right. I think it's getting, it's getting the most attention. It's getting the most attention. Because she or he won woman of the year, I believe, several well, years ago. There's yeah. a couple of big figures that have right. really made mm -hmm. big changes. And it's very, very popular in the secular per, uh, societies to elevate those folks as champions mm -hmm. because they're standing up for their feelings. They're brave right. and they're courageous and all right. of a sudden they're willing to go against all that mm -hmm. All of that judgment and all that harshness that comes from Christians and Christians are so dogmatic and so uh, so incapable of, of feeling love. When, and in fact, it's the opposite. And, and what he talks about, when Dr. Piper talks about, your identity has been stolen. Mm -hmm. My identity has been stolen. And we have to stand against that. Now that's just one topic. I mean, there's a truckload just in this teaching. This is a coaching session. Mm -hmm that we, we, we just spent 15 minutes with him. Yeah. We have an hour together with him on this mm -hmm. DVD, wherever the DVD is, an hour. Now this is the kind of teaching that you need to listen to, make notes, wind it back, listen to it, make notes. You say, why would I do that? Because it's so critically important, brothers and sisters, that we're able to understand and be a, give a defense for the truth. Mm. Just have to know the truth. And the book is in the, same, in the same light. So here's a book, hardback, wonderfully created book with our own DVD. You can't get the DVD anywhere else. And if you have a heart for truth and you want to be able to stand firm, now like he said, we need to wave the banner yeah. of the gospel. Truth, right? Wave mm -hmm. the banner of the scripture. Mm -hmm. with, your, with your best gift, we want to put this into your life. Your, your seed into this good ministry at Cornerstone. If we will wave the banner of the scripture, without concern for our own selves. Mm -hmm. Now that takes some courage to do. Yeah. And that's what we gotta pray, ladies. We gotta pray that courage will rise up in us yeah. and we'll start standing up for the truth of the, of the word because it's, it's, it's a glorious defense yeah. that goes mm -hmm. back for thousands of years mm -hmm. and men and women have done this through thousands of years. It's God's, we're on God's team. Mm -hmm. And as he said, we've gotta be willing to go down fighting. Mm -hmm. 
We got to get in the, in the fight, folks. We can't sit back and complain that the world is, is accepting a Mago dog in the image of man, in the image of the flesh, when in fact we are made in a Mago day in the image of God. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the basis of the truth. And that has repercussions in every area of our life, Amy. Yep. If we think it's, the word says it, as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is, is he. he. Yeah, so what are we letting in our heart? That's why we've got to get his word in our heart. I think of one of my favorite Imago Day scriptures about who you really are and the image of God is in Psalm 8. What is man that you're mindful of him? The mm. son of man that you care for him, that you've crowned him with glory and honor and dignity and worth. And that is exactly how we are as sons and daughters That's of the right. most high God. That's we've been right. crowned with glory and honor. And guess who's trying to steal your value? Yeah. Guess who's trying to steal your worth? Yeah. It is the enemy That's and right. it's an agenda. But go back to what God's word says, not on how you feel, what does he say about me? Right. And then we walk that truth out. It, would, it right. would change our world That's if right. people mm -hmm. knew who they really were in Christ. Yes. Right. And not to rely on their feelings. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what you're saying and that's what Dr. Piper is saying. Mm -hmm. It seems that so many times that we base who we are in Christ based on feelings mm -hmm. and we don't take the time to look at the Word of God and to say, this is, this is who God says I am. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. devastating consequences, mm -hmm. devastating consequences personally and as our nation and yeah. as our world if we abandon the truth, truth. of God's Word. That's mm -hmm. right. It's devastating to us. Our lives fall apart, we spin out of control. Okay. If it feels good now, it's going to get, the more we want it, the more we, we, we feed our flesh. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead to decay and death. The wages of sin is death, very simple. But the gift of God is life. So if we will feed life, then we're going to be able to rise up. If we stand for the truth, then the lives will be evident. That's right. Because after all, folks, here's after all. The good news, this is a pretty serious topic, but yep. the good news is the Holy Spirit. Boy, He's the difference maker. Right. The Holy Spirit lives in you and me. He lives in us. He gives yeah. us wisdom. He gives us truth. Mm -hmm. He prepares us for that conflict. He's the one who's our comforter. But we go down a list of all that the Holy yep. Spirit is in our lives. It's a long list. Rely on the Holy Spirit. If you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, He's just the third part of God. He's God in the Spirit. We want you to, to call us on our, on our, on our toll-free number, 888-665-4483. You know, over three million people have called that number for prayer. Three million? Over three million wow. people. We're so thankful for that. And we believe in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We know prayer is supernatural communication with God. And when we talk to God, He listens. And when He listens, He responds with faith and action. So we're going to pray for your prayer requests. Thank you for calling them in, Terry. Will you lead us in prayer for all of these folks and for all that yes, are watching? Yes. Well, Lord, we do come before you and we lift up all the needs that are presented here, Father God, that you would meet their every need. And for those who are watching, we thank you that you are faithful, that you are a provider, and that you are a restorer. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We're so thankful that you've joined us for real life and for real life coaching. What a blessing it is to be together. Thank you for being our partners, ladies. Thank you for being part of this program. Very important. Consider what you've heard today. I told you when we started that the Holy Spirit was going to speak to you, and He has spoke to you. We're here every day. We'll see you tomorrow on Real Life. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.